what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm ODIJ and this is Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta episode two. Now, first week, it was a little bit boring, so hopefully Bow Wow, Lil Bow Wow, Shad Moss, whatever you want to call him, he's going to save us. He's going to give us some action. He's going to give us something. But before we jump into that, shout out to the notification game. If you're new to the channel, you want to be a part of this, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Oh yeah, wait a minute. Hit the like button. We got to get that engagement. Of all 2021, we're going to get that engagement. But anyway, I'm not going to hold y'all up. Let's jump into it. This is Growing Up Hip Hop, Episode 2. Starting off this week, we got my girl, DeBrad. Now, I'm going to say everything that DeBrad is saying, I agree with her, man. DeBrad's pretty much saying, I ain't been out since all this COVID stuff happened. And when I do come out, I'm not trying to be out longer than what I need to be. I'm going to make sure I got my mask on, glasses on. I ain't trying to be out. But anyway, she's trying to meet up with Deb because we know Deb has a little luncheon that she wants to do to talk with a few of the other women about what's going on because Deb is getting into politics. Now, the brat called her out last week like, you messing with Trump? I can't I can't really rock with you on that. You know what I'm saying? I can't really participate with that. But let's see what Deb has to say about that because she wants people to start feeling the same way she is about Trump and trying to convert who convert the blacks? No, no one with the with the ounce, a ounce, a teeny bit of intelligence is like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm gonna vote for Trump. Once Deb gets here, you know, they meeting each other. They ain't talked to each other in a while, or at least seen each other outside the house. But Deb gets there and like, I want to have this luncheon with the women. It'd pretty much be an icebreaker. But I want to talk about the politics and what's going on right now. And I feel like this is the best time for us to talk about everything that's going on in the world because. Everything's going on in the world that's affecting us, mainly the black folk. But Deb is trying to say, listen, all I want you guys to do is come and we can have an a, agree to disagree. But everyone's going to disagree with her opinion and her view on Trump. No one's voting for him. It's just that simple. And Brad's already like, look, we're going to it's be a, it's going to be a group of girls. It's going to be a group of us outside with COVID going on. This is just silly, man. Let's just do it over Zoom. But Deb is like, you know what? Forget it. I might make enemies. But who cares? I already have enemies in hip hop. So one more enemy is just another enemy to me. Bow Wow meets up with his mama. I'm going to call her Mama Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mama Wow. He meets up with her. And, you know, they just joking around. Mother, son, that's how you do. You talking about she has a bug on her stare. And just like any mom. No, I don't. No, I don't. And if I do, you got to get it. Like, damn, I just joke him. But anyway, they sit down. They haven't spoken in a while. And she's just catching up with her son, Bow Wow, and she starts asking him about things that he's doing. And he brings up he wants to do his last and final album. So she's like, okay, what does Andy think about it? And we all know what Andy thinks. He thinks what Bow Wow presented to him was trash. Now, we know Bow Wow was, probably was trash. But she's like, okay, if that's what Andy thinks, you should probably, you know what I'm saying, listen to him. Bow starts to break it down to his mom. Like, since it's my last album, I want to do it about all the women I've been with. You know what I'm saying? In a relationship. So his mom makes a joke. What is it, about 500? Just joking around. He's like, nah, it's just going to be about nine. Now, the names he mentioned off, you know what I'm saying? His baby mama, Angela. He didn't mention Sierra. But what he did do is say, there is one girl that, that no one knew about. And she's like, who? And it turns out it's uh, Black China. Now Bao's just on his little rant. His mom is like, you shouldn't play this music for the girls that are with you because they're on your yacht. Same thing Andy was saying. Pretty much all these people, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's just tight, Bow. That You know what I'm saying? It's, it's tight. Because they drinking up all the liquor, they smoking up all the weed. Come on, Bow. You've been in the game too long. You got Uncle Snoop. You got T.I. You got all these people. You just doing whatever. But anyway, Bow was like, hey, I got to put this out, man. It's got to come from the heart. And each song name is going to be one of the women that I was involved with. But he didn't say Sierra on the show because, you know, Sierra and Russ, they're going to probably sue your ass if you bring her ass, <laughs> bring her name up in this. Deb pulls up on Johnny Blaze. Pretty much, they haven't spoke too much since last season when, you know, Deb was managing her and she was like, hey, Johnny, don't go out to, you know what I'm saying, on your little trip because if you do, then it's over with. So they had their little disagreement and that's when Deb got done managing her. It's like, eh, you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to deal with that no more because you're not listening to anything I'm saying. But at this point, Johnny Blaze, she's starting to admit, like, okay, I, I admit I was wrong for that last year. I didn't, you know, I didn't control my temper. I should have came at it differently. I should have listened. But I'm, I'm willing to, you know, saying listen and move forward with you now. We may not have that business relationship, but we'll still be friends, and I'm willing to move forward with you. So now Deb's like, all right, cool. Well, check it out. 
we're having a little um, a little luncheon, me and some of the women. I want to make sure that you you're coming and you're involved with it, but I also want to make sure that you're good with with everything. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna just be talking a little bit, just just to get a feel of what other women think about this. And Johnny's like, uh, you know, I, I I I'll mess with it, Deb. I'll mess with it. The only ultimatum that Deb has to Johnny is, listen. We can rekindle this, you know what I'm saying? We can get the ball rolling. We can start moving forward. But you only have one chance. You don't have no get-out-of-jail cards. If you mess up, the attitude goes one way. You do something that we don't find, you know what I'm saying, eye-to-eye. Eye. We don't see that it's good. Then we're done. I'm cutting all ties, and this is just be it. So Johnny Blaze has to get that attitude together and get right if she really wants to move forward with Deb and at least make some kind of business moves with you know, saying with being a, a, a Trump supporter, not even a Republican. She's just a straight Trump supporter. <laughs> Here we go. A little bit of action. So Angela pulled up to Atlanta, got a little photo shoot going on, you know what I'm saying? But we all know how Bow Wow is. Bow Wow likes Angela. She kind of got away from him, but he likes her, but she ain't really bothered with Bow Wow, you know what I'm saying? So she didn't call Bow Wow and be like, hey, I'm in Atlanta. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Let's meet up or just letting you know I'm down here. So Bow Wow takes this as like, what? I hear uh, I hear she's in the she's in the A, but she ain't she ain't hit me up. So this right here took took a shot at Bow Wow's pride because Angela ain't hit you up. And this is your TV show, Bow. Wow. You the executive producer. She wasn't like Bow, I'm gonna be down there. <sighs> now we about to see Bow Wow act a damn fool. Bow Wow pulls up on Shania and Angela Simmons' little photo shoot. But while they're out there, he's talking to Shania and he's just asking her what she got going on in her life. Was she partying while she was in college? She's like, yeah, but I didn't just go to class, come home and text my boyfriend all day. Like, I actually lived life while I was in school. But while they're there talking about it, Bow brings up that Ayana, she came up with COVID. Now, her and Shania, they haven't been talking much. She had a birth. Shania had a birthday party. That was very public, but Ayana didn't show up. But once Bao tells her that she has to see 19, she's like, oh, man, I feel sorry because we may not have been talking. We may have had a little issue, but I'm still her friend. I'm still, you know, say genuinely going to care about her. So she's starting to feel bad about that. But, I mean, it is what it is. So I'm, I, hopefully she reaches out to her because if it's anybody you know, then it's like, dang, I got to see how they are. Because she said her grandmother had C-19 also. So I can definitely see how that goes. So Bao, he's like pretty much, I'm done with this little conversation about all this. I'm trying to see Angela. So he busts in, he goes into the building, goes back to the little dressing room. She's getting dressed. He asking her where her mask is. She's looking good though. But Bao even talks about like, man, you know, I like being single because I don't have to worry about taking somebody out to eat. You know what I'm saying? Worrying about, oh, I don't want to eat this. I want to eat this. And he's just saying that's how it was with Angela. But they're always going to be friends no matter what. But one thing he did say, and I noticed it too, he was like, before Angela would never dress like this. She would never have her body out. But now Angela, every time you look up, Angela got her ass out somewhere. That's because, hey, she's a single mom trying to get somebody to help take care of that kid. Y'all seen how she did my boy Romeo. Made it seem like it was his kid. Made it seem like he was a deadbeat for not helping out because he said he would help out. That's not his kid. Bow, watch out for this. Bow, watch out for this. But Bao being the friend, because regardless that they have the relationship where it's, you know, more than friends, they're going to always be friends till the very end. That's how they put it. So Bao, he sits around, you know, he finishes watching the photo shoot. Like, shoot, you know what I'm saying? What we got going on here? Okay, hey, don't wear that. Wear that, Angie. Okay, okay, yeah. So, you know, they still good friends. He still has that attraction to her. But as of right now, it's just friends, Bao, but watch out. We get to see Diamond finally. So she's trying to pull up to Deb's little luncheon. And they're trying to find Johnny Blaze. Because Deb is like, hey, Diamond, have you seen her? Can you know? Can you get in touch with her? Because I haven't heard from her. So Diamond, she's trying to call Johnny. And she doesn't She doesn't get through to her. So what she does is call her old boyfriend. Her ex-boyfriend is Pimpin. The reason she calls Pimpin is because Pimpin lives upstairs. And Johnny Blaze lives downstairs. I guess they're in the same complex. Now, me personally, if it's my ex, she has no reason to call me, no reason to text me. So if I would have seen that from my ex, I would have been like, eh, yeah, whatever. I wouldn't have answered it. Yeah, I probably wouldn't even have her number saved. But she calls and Pippin is like, shit, I don't know what's going on, man. All I know is the cops is here. So now Diamond, she's like, oh, sh the cops are there. Can, can you figure out what's going on and, and let me know? 
After this, Deb called the police to perform a welfare check. Production also dispatched a producer to check on Johnny. So I'm not going to show that part. I'm just going to tell you what happened because, you know, I don't know if it's for TV, if it's for real, but she's just in the bed pretty much. But all that was going on was she was having an anxiety attack and pretty much she was like, I don't want to hurt nobody. She didn't say she wanted to hurt herself. She said she didn't want to hurt nobody. Now, the reason this right here is a very touchy subject, because whenever someone gets like this, anxiety, depression, all of that, it can kick in and it can lead to numerous of things. You kill somebody, you can commit suicide, harm yourself. You can do all kinds of things. So for Deb, this is very serious because Deb also had a son that committed suicide. So for me, I won't joke around about nothing about this because I don't know if it's for TV or if it's, or if it's real, but anxiety, depression is real. And I'm just going to leave it at that. But Johnny Blaze is good. Amy is Ayana's girlfriend. Now, they both live together. So this is going to be tricky. Ayana has the C-19 and Amy went to get checked and she came up negative. Now, they both stay in the same place. So for them, it's going to be awkward because Ayana has to stay in that room pretty much keep the door closed. Now she had problems with her breathing because of asthma and stuff. So now she has a little breathing machine, but Amy's like, we're so used to sleeping with each other every single night, being around each other. This is going to be tough for however long it's going to take for her to, you know, recover and get through this. Now, I know I had a couple of family members that had it. And let me tell you, it's a lot of work because you got to keep your distance from them, but you got to also take care of them because they don't need to be walking around the house. So it's a lot of stuff you got to pay attention to. And you got to be real safe. Bow and Ange, they get together. They go have a little drink, but he wants to talk to her about the records that he's putting out because, of course, Angela's going to be one of the women that's going to be on this album. Now, when they're sitting there, Bow comes out with these drinks. I don't know what they are, but let me tell you, this boy Bow Wow is super animated. And another thing I don't get is... People wear their mask when you're out in public, but you take your mask off while you're in public to drink. I just don't get it. So it just stops while you're eating and drinking. I just don't understand why people eat and drink outside. But anyway, Bow Wow is super animated. So he takes a sip of it and I guess it's spicy and he spits it out. He runs across the street. <laughs> Boy, sit your ass down, put the mask on and chill. But they come back, they finish the drink. And he's like, man, this thing powered me up. It gave me some energy. Now they go into the little flirty, like, you know, I'm kind of feeling you, but I really ain't feeling you. All this, G -g 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 -g, we going around the bush. Allegedly, Bow Wow was DMing her, but he was only giving her one word answers while he was out and about partying. So she's kind of upset about that. But she's like, look, Bow, you brought me out here. You got a song. Let me hear it. But Bow's like, nah, it ain't finished yet. You know what I'm saying? Let me mix and master it. So she's talking about, you got it on your phone, pull it up. Give me your phone, let me see it. And Bow's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Only a girlfriend can ask, you know what I'm saying, to see my phone and do that. And I, I agree with that. But Bow starts, you know, saying during his little interview, he's like, well, you know what I'm saying? She, you can't just pull up to my city and not, you know what I'm saying, not let me know you here. But Angie's like, man, I ain't worried about it. I ain't checking in with you, Bow Wow. So that right there, like I said, that's a pride killer for Bow Wow. <sighs> but he's like, look, when I get this song done, Angie, I'm going to let you hear it, man. You know, we have a friendship, and no matter what happens between us, it's going to always be a friendship. So I respect him for that. You know what I'm saying? We know he still likes Angela, but we don't know if the feelings mutual on her side. Here we go. This is what we're looking for. So the day of the luncheon happens. Another event where Deb's out, you know what I'm saying? All the women are out. No mask. Just like, you know what, forget it. We got people on the cast, they got it. We got people that all around the world, they got it. But you know what, forget it, no mess. But they all come out, a little, you know what I'm saying, a little lunch and nice, a little breeze. It is good to be able to get out and just have a different environment than all of us sitting around the house. But the interesting stuff is about to start. Once everybody sits down and begins to eat and drink, we get to hear what, what Deb thinks about being a Trump supporter. Now, what I'm about to say is what you normally say to a Trump supporter. Now, they all sit down. Deb starts explaining about how uh, Ayana has C-19. Everybody, oh, man, she like she has breathing problems. So they know it's real. And everyone at the table was like, I don't know why people don't take it as serious. You know what I'm saying? I feel like people only think it's fake because of Trump. And this is what leads into Deb. And she's like, well, what would Trump... He's good. We need to do this. Pretty much anything you say about him is, is wrong because we've seen him all the way up until today. 
nothing he's done. He's never jumped on this. He didn't tackle the, the issue that we got, the pandemic. He ain't helped nobody. And everybody's looking at Deb like, how can you support him, man? He's not he's not helping nobody with the C-19. He's damn near racist, and he ain't damn near he is. So everybody's looking at Deb like, you really called us out here for an event, and you got the mask okay. with the nose exposed? Come on, Deb. This is why this is why it's going around. But hey, and you can't tell it. You can't tell a, a Trump supporter what to do. And don't don't think this red is because of Republican. I just got a red shirt on, y'all. Of course, this was recorded before the election. So Diamond is like, all right, y'all, is, is everybody going to vote? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Deb is like, yeah, I'm going to vote for Trump. And you can see on Diamond's face, like, huh? You going to do what? And everybody around the table was like, you know what? I'm I'm out of this one. It just goes around the table. It's like duck, duck, goose. But everybody's like, what? You voting for him? For real? And then even uh, Andrea Keller's like, man, Deb usually goes with the underdog, but she's going for Trump that's just treating people like a dog. Ain't nobody mess a hey, ain't nobody messing with it, Deb. You just called everybody out here and none of them are on your side. But Deb being Deb, we know she's strong and she's gonna stand her ground. She's like, look, ain't no one gonna tell me who I'm voting for. I know who I want, and that's who I'm voting for. All right, there you have it. Episode two. Let me know what you think about the Bow Wow and Angela Simmons relationship. Do you think Bow Wow should just avoid that? Let me know below. But hey, thanks for watching. I'm Old IJ. This is Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta, episode two. I'll see y'all next week. If you like the content on the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification. Like I said, man, make sure you hit that like. We on that grind of 5,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.